All right, hey everybody, welcome to Chew Stream. Hope you guys are ready to do some drawing. And uh, if this is your very first time on the stream, definitely draw with us. You know, you can download the link uh, just underneath the video here. You'll see a link. Whether you're on YouTube or UStream, um, you can see a link there. Click on that and download this file, and then you can draw along with me. Now, for those of you that are watching this on on the UStream, you can see that there's like these faint ghostly shapes. You'll be seeing them a little bit more clearly when uh, you actually click play. Now, before you we start on the stream, I'd like to just give a big shout out to let's see here every time we do the stream I want to do this I want to give a big shout out to somebody out there that did one of the uh, choose stream exercises okay so big shout out goes to uh, our person of the week found on Instagram did these wonderful three-quarter profile shots um, great and left a very nice uh, message just saying how much this has been helping the person so wonderful and if you would like to have a chance to be featured on this on the stream all you have to do is um, you know post your stuff with the hashtag chew stream C H I U S T R E A M stream okay and then you know I'm gonna pick my favorites and uh, post them on the next stream okay now Let's get started with a little roll call, if you don't mind. Let me know where you're from, and I'll give you a big shout out. I see uh, Ismini on there from the UK, originally from Greece. I see uh, Mara Mika Madden on there from Italy. Wonderful, great to see you. And I got uh, Sweden, Quebec, Denmark, South Carolina, Bulgaria, Tennessee, Finland, Italy, USA, Tennessee, Ontario, London, Chicago, Italy, Spain, New Zealand, Italy, Germany, Brazil, I ILM, London, right on, Israel, uh, oh my god. Okay, uh, uh, they're just scrolling through so fast I can't even really see them, but I saw India somewhere there. I saw um, Israel, Cincinnati, Wales, right on. Holy smokes. Okay, great. So let's get back to business, okay? If you can, definitely download the file and start drawing with us, and this is how it goes. These drawing exercises are the perfect way to keep artistically fit and constantly start improving on the most powerful way to think, the hardest way to think, which is visualizing. Okay, so when you are doing these assignments, I very much encourage you to do them without any reference. Okay, trust me on this. Do the first hour without any reference. Every day, do one of these exercises. And when you're doing them, don't just scratch in lines, don't just scratch in whatever. Try to have a picture in your mind before you actually put it down. If you do this, you will find, over time, your ability to visualize, to see, to imagine things on the paper before you actually draw them down will increase not only that but it will increase in many different ways it can increase in ways where it's like you're looking at a figure and then you see the muscles the bones the fat everything underneath the skin it could be that you're visualizing you're visualizing color it could be that you're visualizing you're trying to visualize things in three-dimensional space to make things very structurally sound it could be that you're visualizing in time I'm going to do this step first, this step second, this step third, so on and so forth. Try to just visualize as, as hard as you can. And some days you're going to have bad drawing days. I feel like this one is one of my bad drawing days. So if you ever want to see one of my bad drawing days, keep watching and you're going to see. But the main thing that you want to get from this video is 
the actual practice, okay? Not exactly what I'm drawing because I expect that you're going to be drawing something completely different. These are based off of very, very basic shapes and it's very easy to come up with something completely different from me because these basic shapes are just you know they're so basic that you can really create anything out of it you could have created a giraffe out of this uh, this shape that I'm drawing in right now you can imagine a long neck for a giraffe and a little stubby body uh, underneath or something like that or perhaps not stubby body but long legs and so on and so forth who knows right the main thing about these exercises is that you're not I don't want you to end up drawing like me that's not how these exercises are designed it's to get the best out of yourselves okay so concentrate hard and try to visualize the things before you actually draw them down and I can tell you right off the bat today's exercise is gonna be tough for me and you know what um, I don't really like the way that I'm drawing today I feel like it's very stiff and whatever but the main thing is is that I want to show you the good and the bad so some of these drawing exercises some days I'm not gonna be doing as well but keep going even when you're not doing as well keep going because it's all about not about how much kind of like weight you lifted that day but it's all about actually going to the gym it's actually doing these exercises staying artistically fit so even if you have a bad drawing day sometimes like I am today that's okay you still succeeded because you still did it you still went and tried and did it and a lot of times you get your bad drawings out during this time and then the rest of the day it just gets better and better and better now Andre is a smart man he knows how to ask a question in the stream so if you're watching this live you can feel free to ask your questions in the chat there on Ustream okay and I will be happy to uh, try to answer as many of these questions as I can so the very first question and when you start off your question, just write question in big capital letters, then I can see it from you know just a glance. Okay, so the question goes, when stumbling in doubt, it's hard to focus and do a great job. How to separate doubt in bad days so you, you can reach your best? Well, reaching your best, first and foremost, reaching your best is not talking about reaching your best today. It's talking about reaching your best over your career over your life okay now when you are when you are um, stumbling with doubt yeah of course it's very hard to focus it's very hard to do a great job but you know what faith brings motivation and persistence faith is kinda like the battery in your vehicle to success <laughs> you know so a lot of times we go through these things where maybe we don't have as much faith maybe we see some art book or we see some stuff that your friend is doing or other people are doing and then you get discouraged let me tell you everybody has this everybody has this in one way or another and it's a healthy thing. If they don't have this kind of thing, then it's, I feel like it's kind of not healthy. Because then that means that they are super just proud of themselves and everything that they do and they think the world of themselves, which obviously is not good. You know, it's kind of like fire. Doubt is kind of like fire. Keeps you alive. Too much of it is no good. But a little of it, and especially having control of it, can be extremely powerful. It can wake you up in the morning when you don't want to get up, keep you up late at night when you want to go to sleep. You know, so work on the faith. You know, a lot of times when I when I can, I try to just 
take a moment for myself and just watch uh, the world go by and think and try to visualize how good it would be to have those dreams come true. You know, what are your dreams? Now, really take the time not just to think about, oh, achieving that thing. Not just thinking about, oh, how great would it be to win an Oscar, say. But actually imagine yourself getting ready for the Oscars. What are you wearing? Where are you going? Who's your date? You know, has that person looking at you with proud, you know, eyes? You know, what is it? Right, going all the way into the the auditorium, the theater, and getting your name called, and walking up, and then standing on the stage, and then looking out and seeing that now you have that view, that opposite view from everybody else on television. You're looking out into the world, and and everybody's looking at you, and it's the best day of your life. And all that hard work that got you there was it worth it? Hopefully, yes, because that will give you that kind of determination, that kind of motivation to get back on the horse and keep going, keep going, keep going, because we know we can get there. You know, successful people, the interesting thing that I found from interviewing so many successful artists is that one of the things that they all have in common so that successful people, they don't take no for an answer. You know, when successful people can't find a way, they make one. Giving up is not an option, okay, everybody? Not believing that you can do it is not an option. There, If you don't believe that you can do something, don't even bother thinking about whether or not you can do it. Just go on autopilot and just keep going until you get a little further and then you're going to believe a little bit more and then you're going to go further again and believe a little bit more can you get to a point where you're painting or drawing like the people that you really admire if you don't believe that then who cares just don't even think about it think about just the basics okay what do i need to do now to get a little better I need to do this. I need to join a class. I need to do these exercises. I need to stop just listening to this choose stream and actually start participating with everybody on these streams. You know, religiously, practically, every day, just go on it kind of brainless and just concentrate on visualizing. And you'll watch. Yeah, it might take a couple weeks or something like that to see true, true night and day difference, but it will come. You just got to be patient, and you got to keep going. You just got to keep not thinking about anything and just keep going, okay? Faith is what's going to bring motivation and persistence, and we don't have faith you just kind of have to go on autopilot, cruise control, and just keep going. Okay. So let's go to the next question here. And by the way, I just want to mention something. San Diego Comic Con coming up. Okay. Kay and I, we're going to be there as well as a bunch of uh, Schoolism instructors. So you can visit us at the Schoolism booth at booth uh, 2042 or at the Imaginism table, G6 and 7, uh, at the end of aisle 800. It would be great to see some uh, Chew streamers on there. And we're going to have our new book. We're going to have some stuffed toys that I haven't even shown yet. It's going to be very, very cool. Finally, you know, and that was something that um, the stuffed toy thing was something that I had no idea how that was going to happen but that's something I wanted to do and just kept going forward with it whichever way I could go forward with it and uh, eventually you know found somebody that um, that could help me complete the task you know 
a lot of times it, it really is about just setting the goal is it's much more important than setting the path even because a lot of times that path will change uh, in time okay so let's go to the next next question here um, next question goes what do you think improves your overall artistic quality more plenty of quick focused exercises or less really hard and revised uh, project uh, longer drawings actually both you need both um, because if you're just practicing quick 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 stuff all the time you'll only be good at doing loose quick stuff but if you take the time to really investigate every little tiny detail of say a car and what all of those t little tiny details do and what you know what their functions are and stuff like that then you'll be able to paint and draw a car much quicker with it still making sense with it still really feeling like a car and a lot of times the real beauty that you see is in the simplicity of the drawing is in it's in the simplicity of the brush strokes where you can describe so many things with so little that's what is so valuable uh, and so highly respected amongst artists. You know, it's like doing three moves at once with just one little, uh, one little move. And painting and drawing fast is not about how fast you physically move your brush or move your pencil. It's about how how much correct information are you putting down uh, and at what rate so in other words you can draw you know right beside somebody that's just going nuts and going super quick with their drawings and uh, maybe the person standing right beside them is like this grand master and is actually going pretty slow but at the end of those five minutes you know five minute pose or something you look at both drawings and the old master has a drawing that looks way more complete, way more finished than the person that was actually physically drawing faster. Okay, let's go on to the next question because there are quite a few questions here. And you can see that this painting right, or this little sketch right here, I'm thinking it's kind of like a, a witch kind of a thing bending down. It's got lots of hair and that's what it's kind of interesting. I don't know, you know, but the main thing is, is that I'm exercising my brain in the right way. I'm trying to really picture these things before I put them down. So it really isn't about the results here. It's about the consistency in the exercises and the effort that you put in. There's no winning or losing here. Okay, the real success comes in uh, the effort. Okay, the attitude, you know, which uh, reminds me, you know, Charlie Chaplin once came third place in a Charlie Chaplin look-alike contest. You know, it's totally not about the winning, right? It's all about having fun, doing it, your attitude and your effort. Let's go on to the next question here. Uh, what is your preferred hardware setup to work your best so something I love my new you know my setup uh, this past year has been awesome because I've been having for years I've been having uh, arm problems right and I work on a big Cintiq monitor I used to um, which is great you know I love the Cintiq and uh, it is really nice to work on um, but for me, what happened was I just worked way too much uh, earlier on for years and years and uh, messed up my arm. So I have to really take care of it. And um, what I do now is I have uh, a little 13-inch Cintiq, and I actually lay that flat on my desk. And I have a big monitor, right? So 
the monitor and the Cintiq, they duplicate, the display duplicates. It's not extended, right? And uh, I look straight forward at the monitor. I keep the Cintiq flat on the desk so that my arm is not up, which takes more effort. And then I'm able to paint just looking at the monitor. And if I need to do anything very accurately, I'll just look down at the Cintiq right, and do something really quick and accurate there uh, before looking back up. Next question here. How do you get better at character design when you never were formally trained in anatomy? How can I really grab hold of these concepts? Okay, so definitely if you're going to do, you know, live action or you know, realistic looking games and things like that, doing character designs, you're going to need to know the anatomy. It's like trying to draw a bag of groceries and not knowing what groceries are in the bag. If you knew that there were three oranges and uh, a box of your favorite cereal, you'd be able to draw that bag a lot easier. Right? Same thing with knowing what's inside the human body. If you knew, you'd be able to draw the human body a lot easier. So, this is what you do. Look at uh, how different artists solve the complex problems of the human anatomy and how they uh, express it. Not just one artist, I'm saying multiple artists. At the same time, look through anatomy books. Start, you know, really just copying, try to memorize, trying to truly understand what the heck is going on with all those muscles and bones and things. Then look at photographs and start drawing down the people and trying to understand how does all the musculature work underneath, how does all the, um, how does all the anatomy work underneath in those poses. And then try to create your own poses without reference. And then go back to those, uh, you know, completely imaginary, imaginary poses. Find reference and correct and look for what you did right, what you did wrong, things like that. And then you'll truly, truly absorb the information at a very um, quick rate. Okay. Okay, let's go on to the next question here, which is, um, can you give some tips on how to network with people without seeming like you're trying to get something out of them? Yes, you know, as, as many of you know, who you know also helps. Networking also helps. Here's just... Um, just a general rule, you know, do what's fair for everyone. Concentrate on building relationships instead of trying to get as, as much benefit as you can. You know, um, ask the person about their opinions and um, their experiences and, you know, things like that. And stay away from things like... Um, you know, can you get me a job? <laughs> uh, generally, you know, you don't want to ask that in the very beginning. And uh, I am the type of person to generally not ask those type of things. Almost always, what I try to do is I just try to help people. You know, like, how can I help this person? Um, and it could be the simplest, simplest thing. For example, I was talking with uh, Scott, uh, J. Scott Campbell, and he was talking about um, Steve Jobs. This is when Steve Jobs just died. And I happened to buy a magazine, and it was all about Steve Jobs and uh, Pixar. And so I gave it to him. You know, I came back and gave him the magazine. It wasn't a big deal. 
Um, but it was it was a nice gesture. You know, you don't always have to have a lot of money or do these huge grand things to um, do something nice. Perfect example is like with your family. You don't have to do anything to do something nice with your family a lot of times. You could just call them up. You could just call up your grandma and, you know, have a nice conversation with her. It didn't cost you hardly anything. Okay, let's go on to the next question here. And um, next question goes, I've been working freelance doing things for or from comics to uh, card game art. I would love to get into character design. What is the best way to get myself out there and noticed? Does your art express something interesting? That's the easiest way to get your stuff noticed. Uh, technique is awesome and when you see somebody doing something with amazing technique and accuracy and things like that, it's great, it's awesome. Um, but if it doesn't express anything interesting, it's not going to be as memorable. It's not going to stand out nearly as much as somebody that did something with an interesting idea. You can think about the most viral kind of things out there. A lot of times they kind of look, they don't look aesthetically, you know, great a lot of times. Uh, a lot of times it's done on purpose even. It's all about the idea. Now if you have both, then you got the super combination, you know. So definitely strive to get those technical skills under your belt. But as well, it's very much about the idea. So how does this translate to your stuff? Um, comics, game art, card game art. Um, you know what? They're all different from say live action film game character designs are completely different than live action uh, designs you know comics same thing a lot of times you take an awesome looking uh, outfit in a comic book and you put it and you actually make the costume you put it live on the big screen it looks ridiculous <laughs> Same with game art. If you think about one of my favorite, you know, characters, Cloud from Final Fantasy uh, 7, you know, if you did the live action version, he would look kind of dumb with this giant sword. You know, there needs to be some tweaking. So uh depends on what kind of character design you want to do. If you want to do something more animated, start working on that movie. Don't wait for somebody to hire you to be on that movie. Just take it as serious as possible and start doing that movie. You know, and start thinking about all the things that you would need in your character design for um, the director and things like that. Once you really start not just um, acting the part but really embodying the role then that's when uh, the belief happens and people really uh, notice you. Okay? Too many of us, I feel, uh, well, not too many, I hope not too many, but some of us, you know, sometimes we work on how we appear, but perhaps that's not how we are behind closed doors. And that's just not cool. You know, that's not cool for yourself more than anybody. You know, work on how you are, not how you appear. You can fool everyone for a while, but it all catches up in the end. You know, case in point, uh, what is her name? Rachel something. The, the former president of the NAACP. You know, she was outed for um, pretending 
or trying to you know pull the wool over everybody's eyes but by trying to uh, pretend that she is African American but she's actually you know uh, Caucasian what the heck was this person thinking honestly how could they even think that they would get away with this or that it would be okay for all this time you know it's fine if that's how you want to be but don't lie about who you are you know be who you are not just in personality but in your art as well you know if you don't if you don't feel true to the things that you're creating start looking for more knowledge start looking for more um, ways to improve things to concentrate on to take your stuff even further okay uh, let's go on to the next question here which is um, let's see can you start a business on your own what if you don't know anyone who works or has crazy dreams like you in person? You know, that's such a funny question because of course I'm going to say, can you start a business on your own? Of course you can. You know, I did it. What if you don't know anyone who works um, in the industry? Well, I didn't. You know, everybody that I want to work with... Uh, you know, I, I did get a couple jobs in the very beginning that were from friends that were, were local to the area to my area but those jobs were dead-end jobs the really good jobs were the ones that you know really I just got them from being on the internet being consistent always improving always trying to be a good person trying to do good things and get out there meet people get into annuals go to workshops you know do everything that you feel is a good idea that will get you a little closer to your goal even if you have to go through a little bit of hardship eating instant noodles for a week or whatever to afford whatever it is that you're trying to do you got to do it. You got to do everything that you think is a good idea. You know, that will get you to where you want to go until you're there. Because every time you slow things down a little bit, you're not just slowing things down, you know, by 50% if you're working half as hard. You're slowing things down by like 80%. 85% because you're trying half as hard because there's no momentum anymore when you're trying at a hundred percent that does like a thousand times more than when you're trying at 75% in other words that's what I'm saying okay so if you're gonna start your own business hey now you have no support picture it like this is life or death I'm doing I'm saying this not because it really is life or death but because that's the kind of attitude that you really have to have to be really successful on your own that's how that's exactly how I felt like hey this is life or death like if I don't get this you know working if I don't if I'm not successful at this then not only am I letting myself down, but I'm letting down so many others. You know, so then all of a sudden that option is no longer available. There is no, you know, thoughts of whether or not I can succeed or not, or whether or not you can succeed or not. You know, there shouldn't be any of those thoughts. It should just be like, this is what I must do. No matter how much I don't believe it, no matter how much you know I think it's like the most impossible thing it doesn't matter you have to and with everybody's situation out there with everybody's situation pretty much 
everybody, we can find an example out there of somebody that had a much worse situation than you or I and totally beat the odds. You know, um, one of my favorite comedians of all time, Richard Pryor. Yeah, he was born in a brothel. He was, his mother was a prostitute. His father was a pimp. And he was, but he was great. He was raised by his grandmother, which usually that would be good too. But she was a mean, mean old lady that ran the brothel. Think about that. And think about the heights of success that he, you know, reached with all of that. You know, with all of that thrusted upon him as a child. We have it good. You know, so keep going. You can't give up now. Anyways, let's go on to uh, the next one here, which is, uh, do you suggest that you practice the same thing for a week and then get to the next or do something uh, different every day? I suggest doing something similar every day, but perhaps slightly different. Okay, so in other words, today you're, you're, you're drawing a car, a sports car. You're drawing a whole bunch of sports cars. Tomorrow you're drawing a, a whole bunch of Jeeps. Day after you're drawing computer, anim, you know, like cartoonier designed uh, Jeeps and so on and so forth. So there is a connection there. What I wouldn't suggest is doing like pastels of uh, rabbits one day and then tomorrow you're doing um, you know airbrush of uh, motorcycles I'm sure it will do something but I definitely find that when you do things that are similar you um, you improve a lot faster because you start to see the connections between things it's like when you're studying one animal and then you study another animal and you see the connections between those animals. Okay, let's go on to the next question here, which is, um, any chance of the sketchbooks, uh, guy sketches, girl sketches, creature sketches being released in a digital format? Um, there is a chance, uh, I don't have any plans right now to do that. Um, there's just a ton of things that I, I have, um, that on my plate that just have a bigger priority. Um, so who knows? Let's go on to the next question is, and it's, um, any practical approach to thinking of uh, light and shadow? I read a lot of theory, but I waste a ton of time figuring out uh, how to think of it. Still life. Paint a whole bunch of still lifes, you know, with uh, controlled light sources. Then you'll start to see, oh, and st start to figure out, oh, this shadow lines up to this one, and so on and so forth, and things like that. Um, but you have to think about light rays, light direction, you know, bounce light, and every little change in tone, you want to think about why and really make yourself understand, you know, really kind of work that brain to understand before you move on don't just copy and go okay that tone is this bright that color is this hue that bright this much saturation don't do that well do that but then think to yourself why okay this tone it gets a slightly more uh, warm hue than the other tone why Right? You want to be a great creator of things. 
not necessarily a, a great copier of things. There's great copiers of things. They're called Xerox machines, scanners. Um, let's go on to the next question. Let's see here. Next question says, um, how do you go for new shapes, new designs, and not repeating ideas, char characters, any tips, questions? Or, sorry, any tips? Um, something that a lot of painters or drawers do is they'll overlap stuff. So maybe you make a shape, right? You copy that shape, you rotate it, you, you scale it, you put it at 50% opacity, and then you put it over top of the older shape, and then you make another abstract shape, and so on and so forth. And then you tone all that down so it's low opacity everywhere, and you look into that. And what do you see? Do you see a robot, a robotic bug? Do you see a um, whatever it is, a grand castle? You know to get away from your everyday shapes that's what you do you just mash things together and try to see something within that I, I find that that is the best way to get away from your constant you know repetitive uh, shapes and perhaps uh, that's a good idea to do for the next stream okay because I really like that exercise, by the way, the the kind of abstract shapes and seeing something within that, um, which is very much what you're doing here, but perhaps not. It, it isn't exactly the same. So hopefully um, we'll do that next time. And so if I could just, you know, put your attention on the drawing a little bit, this drawing really stinks. I really struggled with this one and uh, it's totally just not turning out right no matter how much editing I do you know so but it's put there for a purpose you know I put it there so that you can see the crappy drawings that I do so that when you do crappy drawings you won't just stop you'll keep going and you'll be like this is part of the exercise okay we're just going to get through the hour no matter how bad it looks i'm going to keep the pen moving i'm going to keep everything moving okay um let's go on to the next question here what would you suggest to someone who wants to show his portfolio but can't afford to travel to big conventions or um, someone who lives too far. Well, that's the great thing about the internet, though. You know, the main thing is have great ideas. Have great ideas. And uh, if you have great technique with those ideas, you know, those ideas will spread. Now, how do you know if you have a good idea or not? By the amount of uh, emotional kind of reaction you get and the kind of emotional reaction that you get. Is it in line with what you wanted? If something is supposed to be heartfelt but is actually funny and ridiculous, you know, that's not going to be viral. If it's supposed to be heartfelt, and it is totally heartfelt, and people start crying as they're watching, like Inside Out or something, then, of course, that's going to be very viral. Um, funny. That's a great emotion. If something is truly funny, then it'll get out there, and you will reach a ton of people. But if it's only kind of funny... There's too many things out there that are just kind of funny, and it won't reach hardly anybody. Okay, let's go on to the next question here, which is, um, should I change these gray shapes when I practice every day, or should I work with the same shapes every time? That's totally optional. You know, eventually, you definitely want to try different shapes, but... Um, 
I've definitely had the want to go over the same exercises as I did before. You know, especially those composition exercises um, that we did previously. Those, right after I finished them, I want to do them again. <laughs> you know, just because there's so much variation that you can have with that. So much variation in subject matter and everything. Um, those are some of my favorites. But, hey, you might have your own favorites, right? Let's go on to the next question here, which is... Um, if you could paint, like, one of the old masters, who would it be? Um... Kate, you say sergeant. I th I think I would say um Jeez, I have no idea. I have no idea. <clears throat> um let's see. What else? Let's go on to the next question here. Do artists like Tim Burton get started when their style is so incredibly stylized and wrong, you know, quote unquote wrong by industry standards? Um, or, sorry, how do artists like Tim Burton get started? Well, you know what? That's an interesting one because from what I heard, and actually what um, Glenn Keane told me was that before Tim Burton was the Tim Burton that everybody knew, Glenn actually hired Tim Burton to work on a film that he was on. And Tim would always draw way more teeth in the fox or things like that. I think it was Fox and the Hound. Draw way more teeth than should have been there and things like that. And, and uh, would always just kind of go on his own. But I believe, and I'm pretty sure I'm right, that it was, it was very much because his ideas were so creative that they, they just wanted to find a place for him, even though they were having difficulty finding a place for him. Okay, let's go on to the next question now. Um, people say you must move to Burbank to work in cartoons. I would rather not. How can you stay home but live the dream? Well, you know, I work in cartoons as well. And I don't live in Burbank. How do you live that dream? You know, you just got to put yourself out there. Be kind of like the, the role model artist that you would like to look up to you know just try to not just appear but to be the person you need to be okay and uh, things will find you people will find you constantly put yourself out there I think it's very similar to um, some of the other questions so I'm gonna move on with that one um, and, you know, don't be afraid to just do some bad drawing sometimes. When you're expanding your, you know, your artistic kind of, uh, your artistic library, your skill set, things like that, don't be afraid to start doing some bad drawings. I don't like drawing robots that much. I wish I was better at it. But I'm, as you can see, I'm drawing a crappy little robot right now, which is fine with me because it's the exercise. It's all about growing. It's not about painting pretty pictures. I can paint a pretty picture of the same kind of, you know, creature or whatever that I've done a billion times over. But that's not going to help you, like, grow. That's not going to help me grow. So, you know, don't be afraid to do the the crummy stuff 
because eventually if I keep going at it I'm gonna get good at drawing these little robots who knows right um, as long as I want it enough I don't know if I want it enough at this point but um, it's something I practice is just try to don't worry about things that you can't draw don't worry about things that you're not good at just think about how much effort you're putting in and whether or not you're putting in effort into the right things Okay, so the other thing is, um, where was I? Well, the other thing that I was going to say is that your environment could very easily affect your art, right? Where you live, because you don't live in Burbank, obviously. Um, but you can't let it unless it's going to affect your art in a good way. You know, we got to we got to know that our lives, everything that we come in contact with, all these things might influence you in one way or another. And we got to think how is it influencing us? Is it influencing us in a good way or not? You know, the friends that you surround yourself with. The you know, your loving family members, sometimes they still tell you things that are not good for you to really believe in. Oh, you're, when did you get so chubby? Or, oh, are you, you're not eating well. You know, if you're healthy, <laughs> you shouldn't listen to any of that kind of thing. You know, don't let your um, environment shape, shape you or um, change you in ways that you don't think are good for you because you don't have to let it that's kind of going on a tangent but um, also important okay next question here will the schoolism sub subscriptions be for a year only or will it be possible to subscribe for a shorter uh, time span at a time you could have um, subscribed for a shorter time span if you applied for the uh, Kickstarter that we had but that's already over um, when we release the subscriptions for everybody it is going to be um, by year okay so you're getting a yearly subscription but at the same time it's going to be like less than a third of the price for just one class before you know, twelve dollars a month is going to be a really sweet deal for everybody. Finally, making education affordable. Okay, let's move on to the next question. But yeah, can't wait for the subscriptions to start. It's been a huge lifelong uh, mission, or maybe not lifelong, but definitely like, uh, man, over fifteen years. Is it 15 years? Nah. Maybe 12 years. Yeah. Things kind of expand as I, as the years go on. Okay. Let's go on to the next question here. Um, I have trouble drawing, drawing expressions on faces. Any suggestions on how to go about practicing them? Yeah, study your own face. Study every kind of face that you can see especially um, you know go on YouTube and then you could watch videos of people and how they change from expression to expression and how their faces change and yet still look like the same person you know what parts are actually moving where are things getting pulled from when the smile happens you know where are the corners of the mouth getting pulled from things like that um, start to really dissect and understand and then you'll see how those facial expressions work love doing facial expressions or drawing them or studying them so much fun um, okay how do you develop an idea this is another question when it's a very vague when it's still very vague in your head 
how do you develop an idea? Well, what is your goal? What is your end goal? Maybe your idea is, um, you know, that you want to make a game. Well, what is the end goal of your game? You know, maybe your idea is to have a certain kind of job where you can work from home. Well, that's a great way to kind of uh, start off and then just keep kind of thinking about it and perhaps going back a step. You know, what did you do before you got that job once you could see that job? You know, what did you do every day? What were your habits like? And start to become that person. Start doing everything that that person that, you know, already achieved your goal that you wanted. Do everything that you think that that person would do. Okay, let's go on to the next question. There's not too much time here. Um, so I want to go on to the next question here. Any new classes that will focus more on final rendering? Oh, there are some awesome classes coming up. Uh, right now, I'm watching Terrell Whitlatch's class, uh, Creature Designer Extraordinaire. It's not out yet, you know, but that's one of the big bonuses about my job is to um, you know help the teachers with their classes and stuff, but also I get to watch their classes. So Tara Whitlatch's class, phenomenal creature class, creature anatomy class. Um, Jason Seiler, he is about to start on an awesome class all about portraits, portraits. And so one class is going to be all about skin and how why things look like skin and other things when they're painted don't look like skin and the different kinds of skin freckles and you know um, dark skin light skin things like that how does that work how does hair work the different kinds of hair different kinds of eyes out there how do those things work and just go through pretty much the whole spectrum of all sorts of different kinds of faces portraits young and old and things like that um, right now it's in the very 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 beginning but that's one I'm really excited about uh, another one that is um, on the horizon essentials essentials in realism with uh, John Hardesty He's a fine artist. You know, the atelier programs that people would do to create or to really understand realism, where they might paint the same painting or draw the same drawing for like nine months, a year, or something like that. Well, we're putting together this awesome new school atelier version where it's digital atelier. We're actually doing digital paintings and stuff like that and to learn how realism works that's going to be really cool um, another class another class there's a bunch you know John Lee he's been working on a class but uh, I believe he just went through some surgery so it might be a little delayed um, for those of you that don't know he's a Pixar artist uh, extraordinaire let's see I don't even know if I want to tell you this one but I'm going to anyways because I love doing these streams I love giving little bits of uh, you know the scoop on things Ian McKegg Ian McKegg is going to be doing a class. He's planning on doing a class on schoolism for um, 2016. Currently, it, it's slotted to come out in the summer of 2016. It's going to be phenomenal, of course. Um, and, of course, Craig Mullins still working on his class. Um, 
There's a bunch. Those are the ones I can think of right now, right? But holy smokes, you know, lots of things coming up. I'm doing a remake of my digital painting class, my digital painting techniques class. Been working on that. Uh, let's go on to the next question because we're pretty much getting very, very close to out of time. So um, next question here goes, do you still drink uh, wheatgrass? Do you have any other tips for keeping f keeping up focus and uh, energy during a work day? Wheatgrass, no, I haven't. You know why? Because not because I don't like it or anything. Um, it's just because my buddy T Bear, he was buying the wheatgrass all the time, and uh, he moved to uh, just outside of Montreal, Saint Julien, to uh, head up the workshop house. Um, out there, the in-house workshop house. If you guys don't know, the Schoolism uh, in-house workshop or the Imaginism 30-day in-house workshop is this amazing experience where we take only four artists are accepted at any one time to live in the house, in this big old 6,000 square foot house in St. Julien with a lake in the back and it's just the most peaceful, serene place to get super intense about art. And not only are you going to be living with your mentor, Thierry LaFontaine, but we also bring in guest artists as well. People like Nathan Fawkes, Sam Nielsen, Jeff Turley was just there, Wes Burt, Steven Silver, and they actually, you know, one guest artist will come during your stay and live with you in the house, teaching you, not just teaching you, but breaking bread with you, you know, sharing meals with you, and it's the full, full, full experience, and it's going to be awesome. Okay, so let's go on to the next question here, which is, um, your drawing has more or less uh, revolved around, or revolved mostly around character design. How would you approach environment design? That's a great question. Um, you're right. I like drawing characters more. You can take a look at the composition exercise and you can see environments in those um, because those are still important right so take a look at those ones try those exercises and you're gonna love it and if you just want to do characters or characters you can do those same exercises and just do characters okay let's go on to the next question and even this exercise it could be environments as well. You know, it's just very, very basic shapes. So whatever you want to, you know, pull out of those. Okay. Next question here is working on a web comic for the first time, but I'm not the best writer or good with uh, creating a storyline. Tips. This tip is from Lar de Souza, who is a full-time web comic artist doing very well for himself with a very very popular comic co uh, web comic called least I could do as well as he has another one that he uh, draws for called um, looking for group very very well known web comics and he says one of the best tips is be consistent be super consistent okay um, whenever you post post at the same time every time so if you can only be you know if you only have time to do a comic a week then make it a weekly comic if you can only do something like every month then do a monthly comic but keep it consistent first and foremost okay um, how much do the live workshops cost I'd be very interested to attend the Stockholm workshop. Any news about it? When will tickets be available? Tickets will be available soon. 
soon. I think um, hopefully by the end of this week or next week, we'll have tickets up. It's going to be amazing. For those of you that don't know, I'm so excited about this. Well, I'm going to be teaching. That's going to be really fun. I'm going to be teaching, you know, digital or painting creatures for live action film. That's what I'm going to be teaching. Okay. Um, what else? It's going to be Mike Yamada from Disney. You know, worked on all the all the newest uh, Disney films. He's a production designer at Disney now. He is like the big honcho, and he's going to be there teaching in Stockholm as well as Luis Gonzalez. Luis Gonzalez worked on. Um, the Iron Giant, Ratatouille, The Incredibles, every you know Brad Bird movie, pretty much. Um, he's going to be there teaching story. Oh, that's going to be so exciting for me to watch. Very excited about that one. And uh, Jason Seiler, one of the most sought-after editorial illustrators living today, painted the. Time Magazine cover of the year, or person person of the year cover. He's gonna be there, as well as two other surprise mystery guests that are gonna blow your socks off, which I will tell you guys um, in the weeks to come, because we're keeping it a little bit of a secret, and uh, definitely, definitely get on the newsletter. Get on the Schoolism newsletter to stay in touch. And if you downloaded the file today, the working file, then you're automatically on the newsletter. Okay, so no worries. Okay, so there you go. That's all the time we have today. Thank you so much to everybody for hanging out with me and uh, doing these exercises. The next stream, let's make it... Okay. Next Thursday, same time, same channel. And uh, if you're doing these exercises, post them up. Post them up with the hashtag ChewStream. Okay? So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Next stream in two days. Okay? In two days. Take care, everybody. Schoolism Live Workshops is a fantastic opportunity to learn from your Schoolism teachers live, in person, when you receive education from someone that is known for what they do, successful at it. It's learning on a whole new level, being taught their personal techniques, methods, philosophies that have taken their amazing careers to where they are today. The experience of going to a Schoolism Live workshop is truly education evolved. Yeah, and the thing is that I want to tell you is that I had no idea how to do any of this stuff. I mean, that's what I want to say to you guys is that you don't need to know the end result of anything. You just need to get it started. Don't let that fear of what the end result might be stop you. And that's why most of us will never do what it is we desire to do because we're afraid of the end result. So people are saying, they're looking at a person and they're saying, okay, I want to represent, I want to capture the idea with, with, a, with an image, right? So this would, might be something similar to what the cavemen were doing, right, with, when they're trying to depict a person. You're seeing someone young and sort of the next generation and you're really, oh my god, I'm, I'm, I'm jazzed because, you know, that's, for a lot of people, that's me up there, right? Even as a working professional, you have to stay sharp. You have to keep evolving, keep learning. Because our industry is evolving. And for artists to keep up, or better yet, get ahead, the best way to do that is to learn from the people that are already there. Kevin Lima, and then, of course, Academy Award winner, Brenda Chapman, powerhouse couple. Biggest thanks goes to them. Can we give them a big round of applause? 
creativity is problem solving, meaning you have to get to the very heart of the problem before you can even begin to solve it. Hi, I'm Katie. I came all the way from Michigan to come to the Schoolism workshops today, and um, I'm so glad I did. They were amazing. I learned so much. Um, very interactive and uh, picked up some great tips and I hope they continue to do more of them because I'll be coming back. Come check us out and stay tuned as Schoolism Live Workshops visits a city near you.